Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will remove whatever is not of you in our midst, O oh Lord. And that your glory will fill this place in the name of Jesus Christ. May we feel your presence mightily today in the name of Jesus Christ. At the end, let glory today return back to you. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you know that the Lord is good, hallelujah. My God is good. My God is good. Say to yourself, say your God is good. I said my God is good. Hallelujah. What God cannot do does not exist. Hallelujah.
Lord, you are so good. Blessed be your name. Lord, you are so good. Blessed be your name.
Let your name be glorified. We give you glory.
morning. We are falling short of your glory. We are not worthy. Even in our faithfulness, Father, you have been faithful. Father, this morning, show us your mercy. Have mercy upon us, O oh God. The word in our mouth and the meditation of our heart has gone wrong before him. Let our prayer this morning not be an abominable before him. Cry to God and say, Father, show me mercy. In the name of Jesus, let your mercy prevail this morning. In the name of Jesus, Father, show me mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, have mercy upon me. In the name of Jesus, have mercy, O oh Lord. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Show me mercy, O oh God. Show me mercy, O oh God. In any way I've come short of your glory. In any way I've sinned against you, O oh Lord. Show me mercy. Father, have mercy upon me, O oh Lord. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Psalm 71, verse 21. We can't read it. Let's just go to God in prayer. Let's turn it to prayer. Can you, can you please show us so that we can use it to pray? Psalm 71, verse 21. Please, can you show it to us? Let's use it to pray. Psalm 71, 21. Can we go together? You shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Let's turn it to prayer and say, Father, increase my greatness. Comfort me on every side. In the name of Jesus. Father, increase my greatness. Increase my peace. Increase my joy. Increase me on every side. Comfort me, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, comfort me on every side. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, comfort me, O oh Lord. Father, comfort me on every side. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Each and every one of us need God comfort. We are still going to pray that prayer. Father, increase my greatness. Ah, comfort me on every side. In the mighty name of Jesus. Increase my greatness. Comfort me on every side. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, the works of my hands, oh God. Increase me, oh God. Increase me, oh God. In my family. Increase me, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Increase me, oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's shout, Father. I rely on you. Ah, Father, help me. Help me. Lord, you can do it. You have done it before. Do it again in my life. Where is that help that you need? What help do you need? Can you talk to God? I need help in this area. I need help in that area. Can you mention them to God? He's the only one that can give us help. The help that we need, oh God. Father, help me in my family. Help me, oh Lord, in my marriage. Help me, oh Lord, in the life of my children. Help me, oh Lord. Father, help me in any way, oh God. I am bound, oh God. Help me, oh Lord. I need your help. I need your help. I need your help in the name of Jesus. I need your help, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I need your help in the name of Jesus. Send me help, oh God. Let your helper, let my helper which you have made for me, locate me this morning. Locate me, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Look and live, my brother lives. Look to Jesus now. I love Shall we have the hymn on the Hallelujah in Christ alone?
Christ the Lord, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my soul, his cornerstone, his solid ground. Friend, true the faith is and stone, what I have Striving seed, my comfort earth, my all in all, hearing the love of Christ astray. In Christ alone, won't go
the shepherd of our souls, the Lord God Almighty, the Lord that can never fail. When you speak, it is done. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for the life you have given us. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Thank you because we know that because he leaves, we can pet. We, 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 because we, we, he leaves, all fear is gone. Because he leaves, we can face tomorrow. Thank you, Jesus. We have come today. We ask, Lord, that you look upon us with your mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus. This morning, we ask that you visit us. Take away every form of heaviness from our lives. Every form of hopelessness, Father, take away in the name of Jesus. This morning we have that you renew our hope in you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. You're welcome. Please let's have a seat. God bless you. This month we're talking about hope, hope, and we've learned so much about hope. So today we'll be taking a, a sermon titled, When All Hope is Lost. When All Hope is Lost. When All Hope is Lost. And our text is Romans chapter 15, verse 13. When All Hope is Lost. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. He says, now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, may the God of hope. From here we can say that God is the God of hope, is the source of is the foundation, is the only one that can give us hope. So whenever we face hopeless situations and we look up to God and his promises and we believe, we believe in him, it will fill our, our lives with joy and peace. It is the Holy Spirit that enables us to, our joy to overflow. So what is hope? Hope is optimistic attitude or in, uh, of anticipation and confidence based on expectation of positive outcomes in the circumstances of one's life. It's an optimistic attitude of, in, of anticipation and confidence based on our expectation of positive outcomes in the circumstances of one's life, of our future, or even the world at large. So when hope is lost, is a state of hopelessness. When, when we've lost all hope, is a state of hopelessness. And hopelessness is a belief that things are not going to get better. That is hopelessness. When we believe that things will not get better, or that individ individual believes that he or she cannot succeed. And hopelessness is the enemy's goal. That is the goal of the devil. John 10.10, 10, he, the, 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 his mission is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So what the devil wants you to do is he wants you to lose your hope. Because he knows that once hopelessness te steps in, that hopelessness, it destroys our faith in God. When you are hopeless, you know, your faith level is very low. And we all know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So what are the signs? Somebody that is going through this, what are those signs that we see in an individual that will say, ah, this person has lost hope? What are those things that we say? The individual feels rejected or lonely. There's feeling of regret over some things you did and some things you did not do. The person will just be, ah, I wish I had done it this way. I shouldn't have done that. There's feeling of regret. Then feeling crushed or trapped. Somebody, sometimes a person feels trapped 
it feels like imprisoned and there's no way of escape. The person feels powerless. In Mark chapter 5, 1 to 5, read about the madman of Gadara. Mark 5. Let's read it, please. Can I have it? Mark 5. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. Two. And when they had come out of the boat, immediately there met in, out of the tomb, a man with unclean spirit. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. And the chains are pulled apart by him. You can see how strong he is to pull the chains apart. And the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could any tame him. Five. And always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tomb, crying out and cutting himself with stones. You can see that that was a hopeless situation. He was crying. He was crying, but then he could not help himself. He was lonely. Most people would have written him of that. Ah, Elie, this one can never amount to anything. Nothing good can come out of him, a madman. He is going to die a madman. Nothing can come out of him. But then he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus. And his story changed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The story I want us to learn is that don't ever write off anybody. Don't write off anybody. As long as you are alive and you are in Christ, then you have hope. As long as you are alive and in Christ, you have hope. And perhaps one of the reasons why God is, okay, at the end of the day, if you read up to verse 20, this man, after deliverance and everything, he became an evangelist. Imagine an evangelist, somebody that was bound in chains, that was I was already written off. He became an evangelist. Sometimes you go through situations in life and we're like, God, why? Why am I going through all this? It could just be the enemy is attacking you because of your glorious destiny. Because it knows that, that what God has planned for your life. My prayer for you is that no matter, no matter what the devil tries, you shall fulfill purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Um, uh, my younger brother, when, I, when we were much younger, I was in secondary school then. He was in primary school because the age gap between us was much. So my mom, she got a job. She used to pick him from school because her office was close to his school. But then she got another job and she had to leave. And I was then, I was, uh, I was, I was preparing for work then. So most of the time I go to his school late. By the time I get there, his uniform is already dirty. He would have played, played. So some of my mom's friends now, they told, they told her that, ah, this is your son. See, please do something about him. So now he's like, okay, she went to the teacher that, okay, maybe you should be doing lesson. While waiting for me, you should start lesson. So she went to the teacher. The teacher said, ah, this one, this one is a hopeless case. Wow. Ah, yes, because of his performance. Ah, this, this case is, my mom had to beg her that. She be, it's, it's my money I'm paying. Don't worry, I'll give you the money. And... Because she wanted to be using that to monitor what they were doing in class. Also, she, she got notes from some of her friends, the children, because it was not writing notes. Some of the notes from, from the friends in the school that were in the same class, she got notes, and we were using that to teach, to teach him. Today, he's a medical doctor. Amen. Yes. So that's, that, there's nobody that is hopeless. So don't, don't be bothered what anybody says about you. They are not your God. As long as you are in Christ, then you have hope. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Perhaps we have a, a child that is very stubborn and you're like, ah, oh my, you can, ah. it's because of his glorious destiny that the enemy is attacking him. That child will fulfill purpose Hallelujah. in the mighty name of Jesus. Another example we have is Ega. Ega. Ega, uh, the servant of uh, Momisera and uh, Daddy Abraham. Yes. You know, God promised in Genesis chapter 12, God called Abraham and told him that he would make him a great nation. But by the time we get to Genesis 16, it was already 10 years. 10 years after, 
and they didn't have a child. So they decided to, they said they haven't helped those who helped themselves. They wanted to help themselves. And, you know, Sarah convinced Abraham that, why don't you go into this, my maid? She will conceive and she will give us children, like all this surrogate spirit mother. Let, let her be a, a surrogate mother. She will be giving us children. But then, after some time, things changed. And um, the mom and Sarah just changed towards uh, Agar. It was not Agar's fault. She was a slave. She had no say in the whole thing. Agar conceived. But by Genesis 21, God visited Sarah, and she gave birth to Isaac in Genesis 21. And by Genesis 21, verse 2, Ishmael was mocking Isaac. And Sarah just decided that Agar must go. She and her son, this slave woman and her son, they must go. They must leave the house for me and my son. What did, what, what, what did she do? Was it Hagar's fault? No. But then she had to leave. She had to leave. And uh, let's read that uh, Genesis 21. Let's read 21 from 14 to 19. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and the skin of water, and putting it on her shoulder, he gave it, and the boy, and uh, he gave it and the boy to Agar, and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba, hopeless situation. All she was giving was bread and water, and she, she was in the wilderness. And the water in the skin was used up. The, the skin, the water finished. Imagine being in a wilderness, no water. There, there's no hope. Because you can, uh, there's no way so anybody can survive without water. And she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. And then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shot. For she said to herself, let me not see the death of the boy. Because she has already resigned to faith that, ah, this boy is going to die. All hope is lost. There's nothing. That's the hand for them. And God heard the voice of the lad. Today, God, we hear your voice in the mighty name of Jesus. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of the Lord called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad. Where he is. God heard the voice of the, of the young boy. The, do, the, the mother, you continue, the, the mother heard the voice of the child, but then she was helpless. She was hopeless. There was no way she could help the child on her own. But God heard. That, that, that means that no matter the situation you are going through, don't think that God does not hear. God hears you. He sees you. He knows what you are going through. And verse 18 says, Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Verse 19. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well. Please just leave this on the screen. And she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the skin of, with water and gave the lad a drink. The, the, the thing is that, was the well there all along? Was the well there all along? Yes, the well was there. All along the well was there. But she did not see it. Because her focus was uh, on her problem. The, the, her focus was on her challenge. She must have been feeling miserable that God, why? Why me, Lord? God, why? Eh, I did not do anything. It's not my fault. Because, she, she, because her focus was on that challenge and not on God, she did not see the well. But then God opened her eye to see the well of water. It's my prayer that the Lord will open your eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you are in any form of challenge or you feel trapped, the Lord will make a way of escape for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says, no temptation has overtaken you. Except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able? 
He knows your capacity and he will not allow you to be tempted more than you are able. But with the temptation, we also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. The Lord will make a way of escape for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So what do you do when you find yourself in hopeless situation? You are in this situation and you feel hopeless. You feel that all hope is lost. What, what will you do? What are you supposed to do in that kind of situation? Let's look at what Jonah did in the book of Jonah chapter 2. Jonah chapter 2. If you take it from, let me just give background. Um, if you take it from uh, uh, chapter 1, God sent Jonah to go to Nineveh on a mission. Go to Nineveh. Go and warn these people. Go and warn them about their wickedness. But then, did Jonah, did Jonah obey God? No. He decided to go the other way, the other direction. He decided that he was going to Tashish. And you know, God, God will not force you. We all have our will. But then on his way, he got on the ship to Tarshish, and there was a great wind. And they were now inquiring, what happened? Who sinned? What happened? But at the end of the day, they threw him inside the sea, and there was calm. And by Jonah chapter 1, verse 12, let's read that one first. Jonah 1, 12. And he said to them, pick me and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. He knew that it was his disobedience that caused the, the, the wind. The next verse. Okay, nevertheless, the men rode hard to return to land, but they could not. For the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. But him. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life and do not charge us with the innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from his raging. Next verse. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord. The last verse. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish. It was God himself that prepared this great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So for, in this, for three days and three nights, Jonah was in a hopeless situation. The case was hopeless. No food, no water for three days. He was, all, he was all alone inside the belly of the fish. The mo place must have been dark, must have been cold. He must have felt trapped inside that the belly of the fish. There was no way of escape. He couldn't say, oh, wow, oh, I just can't bother me today, but stop with me. He couldn't say that because the fish does not even understand Yoruba or English. He was stuck in there for three days. That was hopelessness. He was in despair. So it was as if all hope was lost. But what did he do? Let's read from uh, that verse 1, Jonah chapter 2, verse 1. The first thing that he did was that he, he knew that it was only God that can save him. So he looked up to the, to the Lord. Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who makes heaven and earth. He knew that only God could help him. He did not even try to save himself. He just looked up to God and said, God, please help me. What did he do? Number two. Okay. So he looked up to God. He did not look down. To, you know, the things that, as long as you look up to God, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. When you look down at your challenges, you start to sink. The more you look down, when you are in that kind of situation, you just see that, you, you get more depressed. You get more and more depressed. But when you look up to Jesus, the only person that can save you, you are encouraged, you are lifted. So number two, he prayed passionately. We can see that in Jonah 1, uh, 2, 1 to 2. Put it back, please. 1, let's start from 1. 
Jonah 2 verse 1. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord God from the fish's belly. On, even inside that place, in that state of hopelessness, he prayed unto the Lord. He cried unto the Lord. Verse 2. And he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. And he answered me out of the belly of Sheol. I cried and you heard my voice. You can see he cried. It's not just Jeleke prayer. It was passionate prayer. He cried unto the Lord. Some of us, our prayers are mechanical. You know, we already have the words. You know, like uh, in primary school when we want to eat. Uh, Bless this food, oh Lord, for Christ's sake. Our mind might not even be there, but that is what we say. So it's, you just say it. It's not about grammar. When you are in this kind of situation, you pray desperate prayer. You'll be like, God, oh Lord, please come and help me. Oh God, save me. That was the kind of prayer that he prayed. The prayer that, the, the kind of prayer Hannah prayed in 1 Samuel chapter 1, 10 to 11. 1 Samuel chapter 1, 10 to 11. First Samuel, chapter 1, 10 to 11. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept to, uh, so. Verse 11. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on my, the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him back to the Lord. All the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. So he, she prayed passionately. They pray, she cried out to the Lord. So when we are in this kind of situation, we must cry. We must pray passionately. Then number three, what we need to do is identify the cause of your hopelessness. So what is that thing that is causing that hopelessness? What's that thing that is uh, you know, that's, uh, making you downcast all the time? What is the source? Jonah did. He looked, he looked at the source. We can see that um, Jonah knew. Jonah knew. Uh, uh, verse 3 to 6, please. That Jonah 2, 3 to 6. He knew that it was because of his disobedience to God. That was why he was in that situation. So when we are going through situations like that, let's look inward. What's, 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 let's look inward and try and check what's, what did I do wrong? Is, did I do anything wrong? Why am I in this situation? Is it by my own doing? Is it because of what I did or those things I did not do? It says, for you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. He knew he was cast out of God's sight because of sin, because of his disobedience. Yet, I will look again towards your holy temple. The water surrounded me, even my, to my soul. The deep flows around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. So we can see the kind of state that he was in. There were weeds wrapped all around his body. And verse 6. I went down to the morning of mountains. The heart with uh, its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought up my life. From the pit, oh Lord, my God. So he knew, he knew what he, he knew what he did. He knew what he did wrong. So we should try and look in words to find out: Did I do anything wrong? Did I? Is it what I did? Is it what I did not do? Then, the fourth thing that we need to do is to ask for specific help. Ask for specific help. Once you under, once you uh, find out what the problem is, what th that thing that is that puts you in that particular condition, then you ask specific help. We can see that in the case of Jonah, he just cried out to God to help him, to deliver him from the belly of the fish. So what is that thing that you are looking, that, that is, is troubling you? Look inwards. If you are looking for healing, then when you are, when you are, pro when you, when you are asking for the specific help, you need to back it up with scriptures. You need to learn the scripture that, that uh, pertains to that situation you are in. For, for instance, if you are looking for healing, if you are asking God for healing, then you, 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 you can quote Isaiah chapter 55, 
verse, uh, Isaiah 53, verse 5. Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for my uh, transgressions and was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So you quote that verse, that according to your word, according to your word, by your stripes I am healed. I believe, I know. You continue to quote it, and it will work for you in the mighty name of Jesus. If you need deliverance, if you feel trapped, then you can, you can, you can quote Psalm 91 verse 3. It says, surely it will deliver you, me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. And as you quote it and you pray with that particular verse, the Lord will deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus. Then the fifth thing that you need to do if you are feeling hopeless is that you must focus on the goodness of God. Focus on the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good, yeah. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness. the hymns that we sing is count your blessings, name them one by one and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Instead of focusing too much on those things that you don't have, on the circumstances that you are in, count your blessings, count your blessings and by the time you are true you'll be lifted. Instead of dwelling in that place, count your blessings. You can say, what, what has God done for me anyway? Why should I even, what? <laughs> the fact that you are alive in Nigeria, the fact that you are alive and you are, you, are, you are surviving is enough reason for you to thank God. The fact that you are in good health and you are in sound mind is enough reason for you to thank God. So when we are in situations like this, we should learn to count our blessings. We should learn to focus on the goodness of God. Let's read Jonah chapter 2 verse 7. Do now. Says when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. He remembered the Lord. He remembered all, all what God has done for him. He remembered. So let us remember. Remember God. Remember his blessings. Remember everything he has done for you. And my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. Please let us remember. Let us remember. When we are in trouble, let us remember his promises. And as we do it and we thank him, then he will deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 27 verse 13 says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And the sixth thing that we need to do is that we should reject, you know, uh, false fix it. Don't, don't, don't try and help God. When you are in that situation, don't try and, and help God. When he was in the belly of the fish, he didn't say, ah, let me try and find my way out. Do I have any instrument? What can I use to wound this uh, fish? Maybe if I enjoy him in, so in a way, I'll be able to escape. He didn't even try that. He didn't try to do anything like that. Jonah chapter 2 verse 8. Jonah 2 8. Most people turn to God as last resort. After, uh, after they try every other thing, when they see that it's not working, that's when they try, they go back to God. But God should be number one in our lives. They say those who regard... Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. Yes. Some of us return to idols. Somebody will say, ah, is it child you are looking for? Don't worry. I know one mama, one baba that will take you to. No, don't, don't. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. And he will surely answer you in the mighty name of Jesus. Heaven help those who help themselves. It's not in the Bible. It's a popular saying. But we know that God only helps those that put their trust in him. Because according to Proverbs chapter 3, 5 to 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge, acknowledge him 
and he shall direct your path. Praise the Lord. Then this, the seventh thing that we need to do is that we must express gratitude to God in advance. We thank, you, we thank God in advance because you know, you believe that he will do it. Thank him in advance in anticipation for all those things that he will do for you. You thank him in advance. While in the belly of the fish, Jonah thanked God. We see, you can see that in Jonah chapter 2 verse 9. Said, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. You, 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 so in that state, thank God. Thank him. Continue to thank him because you know he will do it. You know, that will build up your faith. Thank him. Thank him because he knows you, you, you know you serve a God that can never fail. Praise the Lord. In conclusion, Let's go back to our verse, our text. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. That's our text. It says, Now, but the Lord of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, as I said earlier, it's only God that can give you hope. Is the only one that can give you hope. And you will give you hope if you believe. If you believe Jesus, if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that is when the God of hope will fill your heart with hope and will fill your heart with joy and with peace. Let's close our eyes. If you want to say yes to the Lord, you want to accept him as your Lord and Savior so that he can give you hope. So that he can deliver you from the belly of the fish. Ah, let's all signify by raising our hands and say, yes, Lord. Lord, I surrender all to you. I know you are the only one that can deliver me from this situation. And here in If you want to if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just raise up that hand. You're not raising that hand, hand to any man, but to God, the only our hope, our living hope. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please, let's rise up. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Yeah. With every prayer that I am faithful, I will say of the good. was that he prayed passionately to the Lord. This morning, let's cry unto the Lord and ask God concerning that situation that you are going through. I lift up your voice and cry unto the Lord. The Lord that delivered Jonah from the belly of the fish is still on the throne. And he will deliver you from the circumstance, from the situation, the challenge that you're going through. Ah, let's lift up our voice and cry unto the Lord. Father, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. Oh, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, 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 help me, Lord. Ah, help me, Lord. 
Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. I cannot help myself. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Another thing that Jonah did was he thanked God in advance for answered prayer. Let us thank God. Let's lift up our voice and say, Father, I thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the testimonies. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you because in you there is no hopelessness. Thank you because you are the God of hope. Thank you for your word unto us. Thank you for telling us what to do when we suddenly find ourselves in situations of hopelessness. Thank you because you have been reminded again that even when we find ourselves in such situations, you can always do something about it. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless your daughter. Amen. Father, release your fresh anointing upon her. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Increase our hope in you. Amen. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Those who regard their worthless idols shall, shall not enjoy mercy. Something like that. That scripture. I don't know if you saw that scripture. Praise the Lord. The Almighty God will help us. Amen. Those who regard their worthless idols will disregard their own mercy. That's serious. I know there are different ways in which we can regard idols. It may be in the form of human beings. Human beings can become our idols that we worship that we think our help can only come from them. And every time we look up onto such and our hopes lie and, and are on such, you know what we do? We disregard our own mercy. May that not be our portion. Amen. If, that, if we can take this word home, it's enough. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Let's clap for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It is time to give unto the Lord. Let's, let's package our offering. But we are going to start with the payment of our tithe. Maybe you paid during the week. You paid your tithe. Or you want to pay this morning. Please package your tithe and dance forward. The ushers, okay, please. Bring the basket here. Choir, give us a danceable song. Hallelujah. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Almighty healer, heal the leper when the cripple saw him. Hallelujah. We know that Jesus goes around, he does good. Danceable song. Glory be to the Lord, hallelujah. 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 Glory be to the Lord, hallelujah.
children that they are tied during the week. Lord, we pray for them. Please bless them in return. Amen. They have obeyed you. Let them enjoy your mercy. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, those who are trusting you for one thing or the other, Lord, I ask you this week in particular, do it for them. Amen. Cause doors to open. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's dance and give our offering and other seeds that you want to give unto the Lord. The account numbers are on the screen, please. Amen. Be 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 real. Salud a be real. Bless it. Amen. Bless every giver. Amen. Let this week be our week of abundance. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please take your seat as we take a few announcements. Praise the Lord. We continue our services during the week. On Tuesday, we're going to have our Bible study, which we call Digging Deep, from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Just one hour. Always very powerful. I invite you. Please, I also want you to invite others as you come. Then on Thursdays, we come for our faith clinic, also from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. God always answers our prayers here. Join us as we pray to the Lord in Jesus' name. But this Thursday, we are going to have Holy Communion. Ah, uh, Holy Communion of Hope. Amen. So please come, 6.30 to 7.30, by the special grace of God. And the Almighty God will have mercy on us in the name of Jesus. He says, do this in remembrance of me. When you remember him, he will remember you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Then on Sundays like this, we come here. Uh, we have the first service from 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. And then in between, we have the Sunday school from 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Second service starts immediately after the, sun, after the Sunday school. And that takes us to around 11 a.m. Praise the Lord. As much as possible, we try to keep to time. Praise God. Please, let's all visit, like, and share our Facebook, YouTube, Instagram account. And you can also watch any of our services there. It's RCCG Showhouse Assembly. Particularly, any Sunday or any Tuesday that are not around, you can always watch the services. God bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Our clinic is, ev is on every Sunday, every first Sunday of the month. Last, well, sorry, last month, last uh, first Sunday of this month, we couldn't have it because uh, some of our doctors and uh, were uh, unavoidably absent. So, but by the grace of God, next month they will be available by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Believers' classes or believers' class we hold today. Please, 
if you are a part of that class or if you want to join please wait immediately after the service your teachers will teach you amen, amen. praise the lord Hallelujah. praise the lord Hallelujah. let's rise up to take the closing prayer please don't for oh okay sorry i forgot to welcome our special guests if today is your first time in this assembly we want to formally welcome you into our midst. Today is your first time. Please just raise up your hand. If you have, today is your first time. Anyone? Anyone? All right. We have to do more work. God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's keep inviting others to church so that they also can be blessed. Let's rise up on our feet as we take the closing prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Can you also do the same? Because he lives, there is. Time, one more time now because he lives. Because we are a people of hope, we can stand in this hope and face tomorrow and believe that our tomorrow will be all right. And so that is why I want you to pray and say, Father, Father in, hope, in hope, I believe this shall be my best week yet. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth, declare and decree whatever you want to see this week. Whatever you want God to do for you this week, in the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and declare in hope that this shall be my best week yet. My week of help, my week of favor, my week of abundance. In the mighty name of Jesus, this is my week. All things are working together for me this week. All things are working together for my good in the name of Jesus Malikrando sakata lambrado sakata legre masekete lekrando sodo masekete lambrando skata pray that this week you only hear good news you only hear good news from far and near good news lord we shall only hear good news only good news are permitted <laughs> in our tabernacle in the name of Jesus this week I shall not be stranded no one in this assembly shall be stranded in the name of Jesus this week none shall be stranded none shall be stranded in the name of Jesus yes this week none shall be buried in these assemblies in our different homes in our families we shall not bury anyone none shall be buried in the name of Jesus Oh, thank you, precious Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for today's service. Thank you for sending your word to us. Thank you for answering our prayers. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Throughout this week and beyond, Lord, we pray. Help us to fix our gaze on you alone. Amen. 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord God Almighty, you said in the year that that king died, the man of God saw the Lord. This week, whatever wants to blow our vision of you, whatever wants to hinder our vision of you, we ask that you take it away in the name of Jesus. Amen. Help us to see your provisions for our lives. Amen. Help us to see that thing, all the things that you have provided for us for this week in the name of Jesus. Amen. When you open Hagar's eyes, she saw your provision. This week, open our eyes Amen. to see what you have provided for us Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. This week, we declare we shall not be stranded. Amen. This week, we shall not be stranded. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, precious Lord. As we go, go with us. In the name of Jesus. Continue to glorify your name in our lives, in our families, in our businesses, in our careers, in our jobs. In the name of Jesus. Let this week be our best week yet. In the name of Jesus. When we shall be returning during the week, please let us come with testimonies. Commit other services, the Sunday school and the second service into your hands. Lord, be glorified. Amen. Please do more for us. Amen. Thank you, precious Lord. You, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship, please. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Please wait for the Sunday school. And you can also join us in the second service. It's going to be more powerful to the glory of God in Jesus' name.